All right, what's going on, guys? Video lesson number two. What do you do after the pump is over? So, um, and how do you know when the pump is over? Um, so this is one of the most important things in trading uh, for intermediate level traders. I would say <clears throat> a lot of the times, right, people are able to determine when a breakout is happening and they're able to trade these explosive moves to the upside with decent comfort. And, um, you know, it really all just comes down to the ability to identify the trend, right? Uh, right now, obviously, we, we had a lot of triangle breakouts that occurred here. And that's, you know, pretty simple because once you get your pump and it's holding, you can see a lot of bullish price action on the order books, it's generally pretty easy to get in for a long and get some profit, right, on leverage or not, you know. Um, but basically, you know, we, we haven't seen really many large pullbacks on the way up here. You can kind of see that uh, overall it kind of just kept flagging and then breaking out some more, flagging a little bit, break out some more, flag again and then break out some more, right? So it's been a relatively easy trend to trade uh, from December to January. And I think with uh, how the markets are moving now, after January is over, uh, things got a little bit harder. So I wanted to talk about, you know, sort of when to let go of the pump, right? Um, like when to determine uh, when it's time to just stop trading for a little bit now that you've made some profits so <clears throat> here we're looking at the daily chart okay so the daily chart is one of the most important charts for knowing when the trend is over and knowing when to stop going long and so is the weekly chart so basically you're going to need to use these two charts combined to really figure out when it's time to take a step back you know uh, you've made some good profits, like five, six figures, let's say, just from trading this pump, right? Um, you need to know when to let go so you don't give any of that mark money back to the markets. And that is what this video lesson is all about. So um, let's just start with the weekly chart. Uh, so you can see I have this blue line set here. Um, that's going to be the seven EMA, so the seven day moving average our seven period moving average. Uh, so in, in this case, it's the moving average of the last seven weeks, um, you know, from where it is currently at. So basically, you know, here you, you can see that we had a uh, extension of 100% above the $10 mark, right? So th the EMA was at $10, price was able to reach $20. So that's around 100% um, on a $2 billion asset. Uh, it was around 4 to $5 billion actually, during the time that it was up here. So you can kind of uh, measure overextensions based off of market cap. Um, so for an asset that's relatively new um, and it is uh, being pumped for the first time, essentially, uh, these you can give a little bit more room to when it comes to determining your overextension level. So uh, generally I would give like 50 or 60% before I would, I would take profit and let go of uh, believing that this pump is going to continue. But here, since it's never been pumped before and um, we're coming off of a one year long bear market, the pumps are gonna be a little bit harder, but 100% above the seven EMA on the weekly chart is absolutely just insane in terms of like the amount of uh, overextension that's occurring there so you know you can kind of keep your threshold uh around you know 60 60 to 70 percent for these smaller tokens that are around like one to three billion market cap um, another general rule of thumb is to look at the daily chart so this is kind of how you zoom in right um you can see for the past about maybe that's around 30 days um, almost actually it's 25 days we have not had many green days uh, it's been a lot of choppy price action so um, 
as if you were to have just used the overextension method and followed it with discipline, um, you could have just backed out, taken your profits and chilled and waited for the price to come back to this EMA line before determining what you're going to do next. So if you have the patience and conviction to wait 20 days without trading again after taking, you know, 30 to 100 grand profit uh, over the last two weeks before, then, my friend, you are starting to understand how to trade crypto. But if you're not able to do that and you're not able to wait and you're constantly looking for a trade, oh, I need a trade, I need a trade, I need a trade. I had some guys DMing me saying like, hey, man, why aren't you alerting trades? Like, I pay for this group. Like, why aren't you alerting trades? Um, see, that's the thing about trading is uh, you really got to time it in crypto. Um, you can see most of my trades, they're generally um, pretty large. And when I do start trading, we start hitting multiple wins at a time. But um, until we see those opportunities, we're not going to make moves and try to attempt to beat the market when it's uh, in this range right here. Um, so you can see like, it's just really not a great range to try to um, make profits. So you can see like this range right here is just, this is not where you wanna trade uh, at all. That's complete chop. And that is how you burn your account. That's how you bleed your profits out. Um, you wanna trade ranges like this where it's just going to a chad candle every other day so this is the moment you want to trade and once things are over you're gonna to have to take your money and sit back relax for a little bit and uh wait for things to chop out it could go you know as far as until next month that's that's the whole thing here so you're really gonna to have to keep an eye out i would set some alerts but uh, generally, you know, the weekly chart is what you want to use for um, determining uh, if there's an overextension. But here you can see that uh, there's also for the daily, the overextension requirements uh, in terms of percentage are a little bit lower. So you can see 20 versus 14. Um, that's about, um, you know, 20 percent, potentially 30 percent of an overextension. So the daily ch chart candle overextension requirements are a little bit lower, but you can see that uh, when it happened over here, um, the, the high was around 13.44 and the EMA was around $9. So um, that's around like a 40 to 50% overextension. So like for the daily chart, it's generally around like 30 to 40%, but since we're trading explosive asset like APT that hasn't pumped before, uh, you're going to want to give it a little bit more room. I'd say like 20 to 30 percent on top of your um, original requirements. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how you milk the market. Right. So you basically just need to have the uh, perspicacity to see the breakout coming off of a bottom on a token that just hit the market that has a lot of hype, a lot, a lot of highs around it. So you wait for it to hit that bottom. Um, well, especially post IPO, right? So post IPO, there's generally like a dump on overhyped coins because people are buying it early. They need to get screwed first and then it's going to come down. Then the real pump's going to happen. So um, for me, it was more about seeing the bottom out on Sol because a chart like this is a lot easier to read on a bottom out. Uh, relative to BTC. So, you know, when, when you see major dumps like this, you generally just go long because the price is too cheap and the chart looks too good. Um, and then, you know, when that bottom out occurred, it's actually when the market started going up at the exact same time. So that, uh, and then the fact that APT was, you know, a asset that was a com L1 competitor to Seoul at a time where Sam Bankman Freed had just gotten locked up. It was kind of primed to have the narrative there. But um, yeah, I mean, even that, I'd say we chop around here for a little bit, potentially dump down to like 11s or 12s uh, at the lowest, and then probably see some upside continuation on this token. But uh, other than that, yeah, um, we could have waited, you know, we could have saved 26 days of downside chop. Like imagine if you're losing like just a grand or two a day, that's a lot of money just because you're trading a chop, not getting good, uh, a good spot to risk your money, essentially. Um, that's all I've got for now. 
if you liked what I have uh, have to say here, uh, join us in the crypto chat at CryptoTraders.com. If you're looking to trade stocks and options, uh, sign up for xtrades.net. Um, so this concept applies to any type of trading um, in penny stocks too. You know, mid cap stocks, stocks with catalysts, they'll also have moves like this. It's not only crypto tokens. Uh, any $2 billion asset coin can, can go up. Um, 700 percent in a month no i'm just kidding that is generally a crypto thing but that can definitely happen in biotech and uh specific industries in in the stock market scene so i'd say these charting techniques are applicable to any format of trading as long as it's uh assets that are around you know 500 million to 5 billion um basically mid cap uh explosive momentum trades and yeah, that's all I've got. So join us at xtrades.net, cryptotraders.com. Hit the like and subscribe button. Um, you know, support our channel, support what we're doing here. We're, we're creating a, a new generation application for traders. So uh, support what we're doing and we'll see you in the, in, inside the Discord.